are a few things that are true about love triangles. One, they never end well. And two, somebody is always going to get hurt. Typically, the person being cheated on is the one that will get hurt. But it could also be the lover that gets hurt when the spouse decides to work things out with the husband or the wife or the other person decides that they want better for themselves and they leave the cheating husband or the cheating wife. Then every once in a while, the love triangle ends in murder and eventually ends up being spoken about on this channel. This love triangle is out of India and is particularly disturbing because the other man was the husband's best friend and took place in front of his children. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. It's so greatly appreciated, it truly, truly is. Before we get started, let me give you my usual disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. Please do not take what I say as fact. Please always do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Next, if you have not liked, subscribed, or commented yet, please consider doing so because it really helps me out. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so 38-year-old Raman Deep met her husband, Sukjit Singh, when he was a driver in England and she was a shop manager. The two married in 2005 and after the wedding, Sujeep would become a very respected British businessman. He was born and raised in Banda in the Uttar Pradesh of India. I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Banda is a city in the state of Uttar Pradesh, India. It's the administrative headquarters of the Banda district and is connected to major railways and state highways. But the couple would end up living in little over Derby in the United Kingdom and go on to have two boys together. Little over is a village and suburb in the city of Derby in Derbyshire, England. One year before, in 2015, the family would travel to Dubai. A man by the name of Gupreet lived there at the time, and Gupreet was a childhood friend of Sukjit. The two had lost touch for a few years, but then they had ended up reconnecting. It's said that during this trip, Ramandeep and Gupreet would begin an affair behind Sukjit's back, then after the trip is over, they would continue the affair via WhatsApp. Just in case you don't know, WhatsApp is a free app that is used to privately message and call people. It was during this time that the couple planned out their murderous plot. Robin Deep would even take out a $2 million life insurance plan on her husband. And I feel like this should always be a sign of bad things to come. Like when your spouse randomly takes out a really huge life insurance policy on you, I just, at this point, I say run for the hills and take your children with you. That's my PSA for the day, guys. Please. Because something's about to go down probably. August of 2016, the family would go to Bonda for a month long visit with Sukjik's mother. Gupreet had also planned to visit while they were on this month-long vacation. Some people say that Sujik knew that something was going on between the two and that he invited him to join them on the trip so that he could confront his childhood friend or maybe even maybe he wanted to see them, how they interact with each other. But others say that he had an idea that there was an affair going on, but that he did not know who the other man was. September 1st, 2016, Ramen Deep makes the family brani, which is a mixed rice dish with some sort of meat, be it chicken, lamb, beef, prawn, or fish, and several spices. She also added sedatives to the meal in an attempt to put everyone in the home into a deep sleep. There were only two people that night that did not eat that meal. One of them was Ramen Deep. And the other one was her nine-year-old son who wasn't really feeling well and opted for instant noodles instead. By 10 p.m., the entire house is asleep. 
except ramen D. And let me stress this. This is all going down in the mother's home that she was home at that evening. So the mom is sleeping in her room and Suchi is sleeping in their bed, I guess in his bed maybe, but he's sleeping in the bed with his two sons. Then at some point, Ramandeep lets Gupri into the home and he brings with him a butcher knife. Believing everyone was unconscious from the drug she had fed them, the two went into the bedroom and Ramandeep placed a pillow over her husband's face in an attempt to smother him. During the struggle, because we all know that this is not a quick process, right? It takes a long time to do this. The nine-year-old son would wake up. When the smothering wasn't working quick enough, Suji was hit over the head twice with a hammer and then he had his throat with the butcher knife that Gupi brought with him from his home. Suji G would bleed out and die pretty much instantly right after that in front of the nine-year-old child inside of his mother's home. Right after this, Gupi left for the airport to try and flee back to Dubai and Ramandeep phones police. There's actually a picture of Ramandeep and her children sitting in the room with police right after everything happened. Gupreet would end up being stopped and arrested at the airport and taken into custody, and Ramandeep would be arrested as well. Okay, so Ramandeep says that her husband was a devout Sikh. Sikh is a monotheistic religion that only worships one God. And even though Sikh, like most religions, prefer for a couple to work on their marriage, there is no code of conduct for divorce in the Sikh religion. Ramandeep says that Sujik wanted to work on the marriage and that he wasn't willing to give her a divorce. But even if this was true, that doesn't change the fact that she could have filed for divorce in the United Kingdom. Prosecutors say that it's more likely what happened was that Ramandeep and Gurpreet Sukhjik for the two million pound life insurance policy and the hundred thousand dollars in assets. It's also said that it was a premeditated act for the to occur in India with the pair hoping to pay off officials rather than having to answer for their crime. There was zero doubt for officials that this was indeed, and that it was not done by some random stranger like Ramandi first explained. She also claimed that Sukhjik's family had done it and they framed her for it. Ramandi's family claims that the two had a very loving marriage and says that they were very much in love, but I would respectfully disagree with this. On top of this, there is a nine-year-old witness that is willing to talk. Maybe Ramandeep never believed that her son would testify against her, but I'm sure that her son never believed that she would his father's throat in front of him. By the time the trial rolled around, the couple's son was 16 years old. When he took the stand to testify against his mother, he said, quote, my dad was great, but my mom was bad and I don't want to see her face ever because she killed my dad in front of my eyes. She kept a pillow on my dad's face and asked Gupreet to his throat. Gupreet would end up confessing to the, and receive life in prison and a 260,000 pound fine. Ramandeep, on the other hand, was sentenced to death by hanging, which is said to be a very uncommon sentence for India. And it's strongly believed that her lack of remorse and the way she taunted her mother-in-law that just lost her son in her home because of you played a critical role in the decision. At sentencing, the judge said, quote, she should be given capital punishment because she, if she is not given strict punishment, 
than every mother would think a thousand times before admitting her daughter-in-law into their home. Going on to say that Raman Deep deserved a death sentence because the crime was pre-planned. She did not show any remorse and he did not believe that she could be rehabilitated. He says that she's from a very good family and that God has given her everything. But despite this, she committed the crime like a professional criminal. She lived a privileged life, never showed any signs of shame, remorse, or pain during the trial, and that they do not see any scope of rehabilitation for her. When he addressed Sujik's mother, he said, quote, because of women like you, other women can keep their heads held high and their children safe. You did not deserve to be treated like this by your daughter-in-law. The pain you have suffered is deeper than the sea. Ramadeep is serving her sentence at Jajanapur District Jail. I'm sorry. It's a 200-year-old jail with awful conditions. She shares the dormitory-style cell with 55 other women and sleeps on a dirty floor. Her prison day begins at 6 a.m. She's forced to sit in the queue with the other women and wait for her turn to use the soiled toilet. She bathes with cold tap water and a bucket in a tiny cubicle. She's only allowed four visits a month and is not able to make any phone calls back to her family in the UK. She is served watery dal, which is Indian red lentil curry, stale chapatis, which is an Indian flatbread, and lumpy rice. Sucks to suck. When she spoke to Daily Mail, she said, quote, There's nobody helping me. I'm all alone here. I can't tell you how horrendous this whole thing is. I'm not good at all. Please somebody help me. Nobody from the British High Commission has come to visit me since I've been convicted. When I heard that I had been sentenced to death, I was in such shock that I didn't know what to say. I still can't believe what's happening to me, but I want people to know my story. There are no words to describe what a bad situation this is for me. It's horrendous. It's like being in hell, both this prison and the bigger situation I find myself in. It's the worst thing that has happened to me. I feel so alone. I haven't made any friends here and I just keep to myself. The food and the conditions are really awful. I don't speak to anyone. I don't want to do anything. I just spend my whole day sitting around crying. I've suffered a miscarriage of justice. I haven't done anything wrong. I was framed and now I'm rotting in this jail. There's nobody helping me. I'm all alone here. I can't begin to tell you how horrendous this thing is. I'm not good at all. Please somebody help me. In case you missed that, the entire statement only contained the words, me, mine, and I, never once mentioning the pain of her husband's family or her children. Her lawyer has come out to say, quote, my client did get quite worked up during the trial, especially when she saw her mother-in-law and did ABUSE her. That's a fact. She didn't behave in the best way, but that doesn't mean she should get the death penalty. It's a ridiculous, laughable ruling by the, by the judge. We are confident that this sentence will be overturned because the judge's ruling is seriously flawed. I think Ramandeep and her family and her lawyer are all seriously flawed. The two boys have not spoken to their mother since the arrest and now live with their grandparents in their seven bedroom house in the Midlands. All right, guys, if you're still here, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you and I appreciate you so, so, so very much. Please like, subscribe and comment if you haven't yet and you feel so inclined to. Until next time, stay safe out there.